I'm Oliver Perkovich. I'm an Australian skateboarder. I grew up in Papua New Guinea. I subsequently traveled to over 50 countries, and I've spent the last seven years in Afghanistan. In Afghanistan, I started an NGO called Skaterstan, which uses skateboarding to connect children to education. This was never my plan. Let me tell you the story of how it happened. In 2007, I followed my girlfriend to Kabul, where she had a job as a researcher. I was also looking for a job as a researcher, and I've been a skateboarder since I was six years old. So wherever I've traveled, I've always brought my skateboard with me. And Kabul was no exception. And I skateboarded in the street with friends in Kabul. And Afghans were fascinated. They'd never seen anything like it before. And both boys and girls wanted to try out the, try out the skateboard. Now, Afghanistan is full of young people. Half of the population is under the age of 16. 70 percent is under the age of 25. And it really shocked me to see firsthand the role that women played in society. Most women didn't have jobs. Most girls didn't go to school. There weren't any women drivers on the road. There weren't any girls riding bicycles because it was deemed culturally inappropriate. All of the popular sports were seen as activities just for boys, not for girls. And I thought to myself, how is it possible that I've been skateboarding with girls in the street, but they're not allowed to play these other sports? And I realized skateboarding was a loophole. It was so new <laughs> that nobody had had a chance to say that girls couldn't do it yet. So I thought, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to... I want to try to expand this, uh, expand this idea, and I was really excited about it. And not everybody shared my enthusiasm. <laughs> Most people were pretty cynical, and uh, they thought, what did, why would, what's the use of skateboarding in Afghanistan? What is it going to do for anybody? I'd been skateboarding for over 25 years in the streets, and people had been telling me not to skate in the streets. So a couple more people weren't going to change my mind. I, hadn't, I didn't have any money to follow this, uh, to follow this idea. I, I was living on less than $10 a week. I was sleeping on friends' couches. It was a really difficult time. I started to question my sanity. What was I doing in one of the most dangerous cities in the world with electricity every third day for two hours and far away from friends and family? But these daily skateboard sessions with children kept me going, and I hung, I hung in there. We were skateboarding in an abandoned fountain. It was this empty fountain that was perfect for skateboarding in. And girls and boys from the whole area would come there, from different ethnicities, from different, uh, from different social backgrounds. There was one day in particular that really changed everything for me. It was a girl session. And there were girls from the nearby apartment blocks, which was quite middle class, as well as really poor girls that were working in, in that area. And they were all skateboarding together. And they had so much fun. They were shrieking while they were skateboarding. At, at the end of it, they all sat around the fountain, which you can see, and they started to sing a song together. And after they finished singing the song, they held hands and they started to dance around the fountain. And this is not what usually happens after a skateboard session in most places <laughs> in the world. I saw there a microcosm of what Afghanistan's future needed. It needed people from different ethnicities to come together, from different social backgrounds, for trust to be built, for community to be built. And those elements, trust and community, would lead to outcomes in health, in education, in security. One of the poorest girls that was coming to, that, to these skateboard sessions was a girl named Fazilla. She was 12 years old, and she was supporting her family by begging in the street. And I heard that her parents had recently pulled her out of school so that she could beg full-time in the street. And so through an Afghan co-worker, Shams, we approached 
the parents and pitch this idea of would Fazila be able to be a skateboard instructor and earn a little bit of income that way? And if she had this job, would they allow her to go back to school? The parents agreed with this idea. Fazila was wrapped to go back to school. And there, the link between skateboarding and education in Afghanistan was first made. That's five years ago. Since then, Skaterstan has gone on to build the two largest indoor sports facilities in Afghanistan. And there's another one in Cam Cambodia, in Phnom Penh. <laughs> these, these facilities have a thousand children that come to them weekly, all between the ages of five and 17. And they come for skateboarding and they stay for education. The dreams of the children are different to those of their parents. They've got a shared identity through skateboarding and they've got a unique community that gets built. That community can create hope in a place where sometimes it's impossible to have hope. On September 8, 2012, there was a suicide attack on an international military base in Kabul. Four Skaterstan students were killed in that attack. Hashid, her sister Pawana, Isa and Nawab were all there outside the base selling trinkets and begging from soldiers. The Skaterstan community rallied around at this point and supported the, the family with food, with wood for heating in winter. They held ceremonies in the skate park and even the graves of the sisters, Hoshid and Pawana, were dug by a skateboard instructor. About two weeks later, I was in the Kabul skate park and I was really happy to see the younger brother of Isa there. He was in the skate park and he was skating his heart out. He was just ripping around the place and you could tell that he was in a safe space. This was a release for him in a really difficult time. He was celebrating something that both him and his brother loved. The local community created through skateboarding can also transcend international barriers. When somebody sees a picture of a young girl in Afghanistan on a big ramp and she's dropping in and she's achieved something that she thought was impossible, she also becomes the subject of respect, not pity, in those people's eyes. Skaterstan has also changed the perception of Afghans and skateboarders around the world, humanising both in the process. <laughs> this human element is important to remember when we're talking about aid. Aid is usually, it usually works in a top-down model where a really rich country like Australia gives money towards a poor country like Afghanistan. And there's often a disconnect between the people that are making decisions about aid and then the recipients on the other end. Skaterstan was led by the students. They were invested in it being a success. They made it a success. Aid should be based on caring and respect, not pity. Today, the image coming from Afghanistan of a young man with a big beard and AK-47 can be contrasted with that of a smiling girl on a skateboard. Globally, only about 5% of skateboarders are girls. In Afghanistan, 40% of skateboarders are girls. Skateboarding is now the largest female sport in Afghanistan. The key is not skateboarding. The key is the power of sharing something that you love. And with persistence, 
it can grow into something quite unexpected and truly amazing.